हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला टूडे वी विल डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल सॉइल माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड देयर फंक्शंस माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स दे आर स्मॉल माइक्रोस्कोपिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट ऑल अराउंड अस इन वाटर इन एयर एंड इन सॉइल सॉइल इज द मोस्ट फेवरेबल मीडियम फॉर द माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म एज इट इज रिच इन द ऑर्गेनिक मैटर the vast variety of the microorganisms present in the soil include bacteria fungi viruses protozoa and actinomycetes in the in the soil these microorganisms they play a very diverse role they are acting as the decomposers in the soil for the sustainability of the soil ecosystem they are degrading or we can say decomposing the living or the dead organic matter which is present in the soil and make it available to the plant in the soil they are also acting as nitrogen fixers because they are fixing the atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia nitrites and nitrates and these forms are readily available to the plant these uh, bacteria in the soil also act as the phosphorus solubilizers and they are solubilizing the complex form of the phosphates with the calcium aluminum and iron into the available form which can be readily utilized by the plant because of the activity of the bacteria as a nitrogen fixer and as phosphorus solubilizer they are also commercialized as biofertilizers these bacteria not only acting as the biofertilizers they are also producing certain phytohormones as well as certain uh, another molecules which will regulate the growth of the plants that's why they are also having the plant growth promoting role when they are present in the rhizosphere area of the plant in addition to this the bacteria they are also acting as the disease suppressors and this activity of the bacteria is commercialized as their potential in biocontrol agents so in this mod module today we will discuss the various kinds of bacteria which are present in the soil and their role in maintaining the soil ecosystem soil is the natural and dynamic medium for the growth of land plants and the, it is an important factor which influences the productivity of our planet's ecosystem a mass of mineral particles alone do not constitute soil but it contains also air water dead organic matter and various types of living organisms the formation of a soil is influenced by the kind of organisms present in the soil the climate topography and the parent material of that area as well as the time period true soils are influenced modified and supplemented by living organisms and soil contain different type of microorganisms including bacteria actinomycetes fungi algae and viruses the plants and animals they aid in the development of the soil through the addition of organic matter microorganisms mainly fungi and bacteria they decompose this organic matter into semi soluble chemical substance which is known as humus larger soil microorganisms like earthworms beetles and termites they also vertically distribute this humus within the mineral matter which is found beneath the surface of the soil the soil environment differs from one location to another and also from season to season therefore factors such as moisture ph temperature organic and inorganic content as well as the oxygen content affects the microbial flora of the soil samples every gram of a typical healthy soil is the home for several hundred to several thousand different species of bacteria in addition soil is also a home to microscopic fungi algae cyanobacteria actinomycetes protozoa nematodes and macroscopic earthworms and insects all these organisms can be divided between autotrophs which are the self feeders such as plants algae and cyanobacteria and the second category is heterotrophs which are different feeders like fungi and bacteria which decompose the organic matter 
The studies of soil microbial diversity has revealed that only less than 10 percent of the soil microbial community could be readily cultured. So, 90 percent of the non-culturable microorganisms could be identified in their naturally occurring microbial population without culturing them in the lab conditions. For this, the techniques they are used, they include extraction and isolation of ribosomal RNA genes directly from the microbial cells which are present in the soil. After the isolation of ribosomal RNA genes, they are amplified from the total community DNA using the PCR with rRNA specific primers of that community. These primers can select different microbial groups at the level of a domain and different approaches can be taken to separate and sequence the rRNA genes and this will finally contribute for the microbial diversity analysis. By comparing the sequences of the rRNA genes from the cultivated species and the sequences which are already present in the databases such as NCBI's gene bank, the phylogenetic relationship between the unknown and the known organisms are determined and it provides an estimate of the genetic diversity of the organisms which are present as a community. The sequence information also allows the organism's characteristics given what is known of its closest cultivated relative. Sometimes this phylogenetic information can also be used to infer physiology. For example, all cyanobacteria they form a single monophyletic group as do many sulfur reducing bacteria, halophiles and methanogenic archaeobacteria. Now as we had talked about the kind of soil microorganisms, now let's start the study of these microorganisms one by one. First soil microorganisms actinomycetes. Actinomycetes are numerous and widely distributed in the soil and they are next to bacteria in their abundance. The common genera of actinomycetes are streptomycetes which corresponds to roughly 70 percent of the total actinomycete population present in the soil, nocardia, micromonospora and streptosporangium are also generally encountered in the soil. These actinomycetes are widely distributed in the soil as well as in the compost and the population of these actinomycetes it increases with the depth in the soil. They are found on every natural substrate but they prefer non-acidic soils which are having the pH range higher than 5. They are heterotrophic, aerobic and mesophilic means they love to grow at the temperature of 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. And some species which are commonly present in the compost and manure, they are thermophilic. It means they can be able to grow at 55 to 65 degrees C temperature. While most of the bacteria, they are found in the top foot or the top soil, the actinomycetes work many feet below the surface. Deep under the roots, they convert the dead plant matter to the organic substances. While they are decomposing, animal and vegetable matter, they also liberate carbon, nitrogen, ammonia and thus making the nutrients available for higher plants. 5 percent or more of the soil microbial population is comprised of actinomycetes and they are having the ability to produce antibiotics also. Antibiotics are the chemical substances that inhibit the bacterial growth. And these are the organisms with characteristics common to both the bacteria and the fungi but yet they possess the distinctive features. These actinomycetes they are unicellular like the bacteria but produce a mycelium which is non-septate. This condition is also called cenocytic and the mycelium is more cylinder. Like the true bacteria they do not have distinct cell wall and their cell wall is without chitin and cellulose and this chitin and cellulose they are commonly found in the cell wall of fungi. On the culture media the slimy distinct colonies of true bacteria which grow very quickly but 
the actinomycetes colonies they grow slowly and they show the powdery consistency and they stick firmly to the agar surface they produce the hyphae and conidia like the fungi certain actinomycetes also have the segmented hyphae which resemble bacteria both morphologically and physiologically so we can say that these actinomycetes they are having some of the characters like bacteria and some of the characters resemble the fungi but still it's a distinct category the characteristic earthy smell of the newly ploughed soil in the spring season is caused by these actinomycetes a higher form of bacteria which is similar to fungi and molds and these actinomycetes they are especially important in the formation of the humus by slowly breaking down the humic acid which is present in the soil now let's discuss the functions of actinomycetes as i have already discussed that these actinomycetes they decompose all sorts of organic substances like cellulose polysaccharide proteins fats and organic acids so they are very good decomposers the organic residues and the substances which are added to the soil are first attacked by bacteria and fungi and later on the actinomycetes they attack on this semi hydrolyzed organic residues because they are slow in activity as well as their growth is also slow as compared to bacteria and fungi these actinomycetes they decompose the more resistant and the indecomposable organic substance and produce a number of dark black to brown pigments which contribute to the dark color of soil humus they are also responsible for the subsequent further decomposition of the humus in the soil these actinomycetes are also responsible for the earthy smell of the freshly ploughed soils many genera of the actinomycetes they synthesize a number of antibiotics like streptomycin teramycin oreomycin all these antibiotics they are secreted by the actinomycete streptomyces species one of the actinomycete species is also causing the disease namely streptomyces scabies which is causing the disease potato scab in the potato crop Now after actinomycetes let's start with soil bacteria bacteria are the smallest single cell microorganisms which is which are having the shape either a coccus a rod or a spiral twist and they are most abundantly found in the soil 1 gram of the soil in good condition can contain 600 million bacteria belonging to an estimated 60000 different species most of which have yet to be even named and each is having its role its own role and capabilities most bacteria are colorless and produce colonies others are free living all of them they reproduce by means of binary fission in which the nucleus splits into two and the new cell wall grows crosswise over the middle of the cell so each half of the cell contains one of the two nuclei and the new individual produced from the single bacterial cell is having the same nuclear composition under the best conditions a colony of bacteria can multiply into billions in a very short time span and the time span for one generation of bacteria is about 20 to 30 minutes so it means the cells may yield progeny or billions of individuals in just half of a day the microorganisms exist throughout the soil but they predominate in the top surface soil in the top surface soil the food sources are plentiful and they are also present around the macropores as they are dependent on the root exudates and the slugged off cells of the root which are which is a readily available food source for these bacteria that's why they are abundant in the area immediately next to the plant roots the unique soil microbial ecosystem associated with immediate vicinity of the plant roots is called the rhizosphere the rhizosphere is the narrow region of the soil 
that is directly influenced by the root and the associated soil organism which are primarily the decomposers of the organic matter. Among the different microorganisms inhibiting in the soil, bacteria are most abundant and predominant microorganism. They are primitive, prokaryotic, microscopic and unicellular microorganisms without chlorophyll. Bacteria being the prokaryote does not possess well defined nucleus and the single chromosome which is present in a bacterial cell consists of a double helix DNA lying naked in the cytoplasm. This double helical DNA is attached to the membrane foldings which is called mesosome. The only cell organelle which is present in the bacterial cell is the ribosomes which are of 70s type. This bacterial cell is enveloped by the cell wall which is a tough rigid structure made up of peptidoglycan, lipopolysaccharides and tachoic acid. Some bacteria do have a jelly like outer covering that surrounds the cell wall and this, cell, this jelly like uh, covering is called capsule. This capsule is either consisted of polysaccharides and occasionally of polypeptide and hyaluronic acid. Sometimes the short filaments are extruding from the cytoplasmic membrane and they are called fimbri or pili. Based upon the morphological features of bacteria, they are classified as gram positive or gram negative. Based upon the staining method given by Danish physician Hans Christian Gram. Gram has given staining method in which based upon the lipopolysaccharide content of the different present in the cell wall of the different bacteria either the bacteria they will have the violet color or they will have the pink color in this gram staining process. The gram positive bacteria they will have the purple color the violet color and the gram negative bacteria they will have the pink color. The most common method for isolation of soil bacteria is the dilution plate count method which allows only viable cells to grow. The, on the basis of ecological characteristics, the soil microorganisms are classified into two broad categories, autotonous as well as zymogenous. Autotonous bacterial population is uniform and constant in the soil because their nutrients they are derived from the native soil organic matter example arthrobacter and nocardia whereas the second category zymogenous bacterial population in the soil is low as they require an external source of energy and the presence of this zymogenous bacteria increases gradually when a specific substrate is added to the soil example cellulose decomposers nitrogen utilizing bacteria and ammonia fires they are they belong to this zymogenous category zymogenous bacteria they are not the native population of the soil as per the system proposed in the burgess manual of system systematic bacteriology most of the bacteria which are predominantly encountered in the soil they are taxonomically included in the genera pseudomonas arthrobacter clostridium acromobacter and enterobacter the another group of bacteria which is common in the soil belongs to the genera micrococcus chondrococcus arachangium polyangium and cryptophaga on the basis of physiological activity the bacteria they are classified into two categories autotrophic bacteria and heterotrophic bacteria Autotrophic bacteria, they are capable of synthesizing their food from simple inorganic nutrients while heterotrophic bacteria, they depend upon preformed food for nutrition. All autotrophic bacteria utilize carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere as the carbon source and derive the energy either from sunlight or from the oxidation of simple inorganic substances present in the soil. The former category belongs to phototrophs and the later category belongs to chemotrophs. 
the common example of phototrophs are chromatrum chlorobium and redosidomonas and the example of chemotrophs is nitrobacter nitrosomonas and thiobacillus moving ahead to heterotrophic bacteria majority of the soil bacteria are heterotrophic in nature as they derive their carbon and energy from complex organic substances present in the soil they decompose the organic matter certain bacteria also require specific amino acids vitamins and other growth promoting substances for the growth another class of bacteria belongs to decomposers these de bacteria are smaller less mobile less complex than most of the organisms therefore they are less able to escape an environment that becomes unfavorable bacteria being most nutritionally diverse among all the categories of organisms they, which is to say as a group they can be eat nearly anything most compost bacteria are heterotrophic that is they can use either living or dead organic material some are so adaptable that they can use more than 100 different organic compounds as their source of carbon because of their ability to produce a variety of enzymes usually they can produce the appropriate enzyme to digest whatever the material they find for themselves in addition the respiratory enzymes in the cell membrane make aerobic respiration possible as an energy source for the compost bacteria another very distinctive class of bacteria are nitrogen fixing bacteria we all know that nitrogen is required for cellular synthesis of enzymes proteins chlorophyll dna rna and therefore it is very important in plant growth and production the ability of crop plant to thrive is frequently limited by the supply of available nitrogen although there is a lot in the atmosphere but the plants are unable to utilize it instead they rely on the inorganic supply which is available to them in the form of fertilizers but certain species of bacteria they are having the capacity to fix the atmospheric nitrogen into the usable form ammonia as well as the nitrites and nitrates which are readily utilized by the plants this phenomenon of nitrogen fixation can add more than 100 kg of nitrogen per hectare per year some of the bacteria which belong to this nitrogen fixers they exist either free living in the soil or they are associated with the roots of the non legume plants the free living bacteria present in the soil that can fix the nitrogen are aerobic species which belong to azotobacter azospirulum gluconobacter flavobacterium and herbospirulum these aerobic organisms they shield the anaerobic nitrogenase enzyme which is responsible for fixation of dinitrogen into ammonical nitrogen from the oxygen as they are having a very high rate of oxygen use so in this way they minimize the diffusion of oxygen into the interior of the cell where the enzyme is located the free living obligate aerobe that fixes nitrogen is basirenchia and the anaerobic bacteria they are also fixing the atmospheric nitrogen and they belong to the genus clostridium another group of bacteria which are capable of fixing nitrogen in the soil like rhizobium mesorhizobium bradyrhizobium azorhizobium elorhizobium and cynorhizobium they live in the root nodules of the leguminous plants like clover pea peanut beans alfalfa and they are living as the symbionts the free these free living rhizobium which is present in the plant root after the infection of the root it infect the root cells normally it forms rod shaped cells which proliferate and it will lead to the formation of the root nodules in the leguminous plants you can see a nodulated root of the legume plant 
and the bacteroid structure of the root nodules in the slide. There are so many examples of symbiotic nitrogen fixation in the non-leguminous plants also such as trees. The elder tree is symbiotically infected with the actinomycete frankia and forms the nitrogen fixing root nodules. Nitrogen fixing bacteria belong to different phyla of the domain eubacteria and they are present in the roots of the plants in more or less specific manner. In the roots, they are leading to the formation of the root nodules and they have higher activity in relation to the host. However, some bacteria may inhabit the root surface or the plant rhizosphere, forming associations with low degree of specificity with the host. Plants associated with these bacteria benefit themselves due to increased nitrogen supply and in the case of symbiotic association, over 90% of the nitrogen contained in the plant can be fixed by bacteria. Thus, the presence of nitrogen fixing bacteria in the rhizosphere of the plant can improve the plant growth in nitrogen poor environments as well as promote increased nitrogen content of the soil. Another class of bacteria, it belongs to phosphate solubilizing microorganisms. Another category of the microorganism present in the soil belongs to phosphate solubilizing microorganisms. These microorganisms are naturally present in the soil and they are also associated with the plant, plant roots or they are present in the rhizosphere area. These phosphate solubilizing microorganisms are very important in the tropical soils as they are able to indirectly provide the phosphorus to the plants by solubilizing the total phosphorus present in the soil associated with iron, aluminium and calcium. These microorganisms solubilize the phosphorus adsorbed by soil minerals by means of various mechanisms and these mechanisms they are shown on the slide. These mechanisms which have been proposed to explain the phosphorus solubilization are the release of organic or inorganic acids, excretion of protons which accompanies the ammonia assimilation. So, the release of these organic and inorganic acids into the soil will decrease the pH of the soil in the localized area and will make the precipitated phosphorus to get dissociate, dissociated and then it becomes available to the plant. Many organic acids produced by the rhizospheric microorganisms, they are very effective in solubilizing the soil phosphates by decreasing the adsorption of phosphorus on the clay surface and so they are solubilizing the hydroxyapatite that is the rock phosphate and the plant phosphorus uptake increases. Some of the organic acid which are commonly found in the plant rhizospheric area are gluconic acid, oxalic acid, citric acid, lactic acid, tartaric acid and aspartic acid. And these acids, they are produced due to oxidative respiration or because of the decomposition of organic carbon sources in the microbial metabolism. In addition to the above discussed mechanism, the release of phosphatase enzyme by the phosphorus solubilizing microorganism also mineri mineralize the organic phosphorus compound and is also is the mechanism involved in the solubilization of phosphorus. So many studies have shown that inoculation of this group of microorganisms in the soil increases the available phosphorus content of the soil. Because of this property only these phosphorus solubilizing bacteria they are forming they are used in the agriculture as biofertilizers. Microorganisms also play a role of plant growth promoting rhizobacteria in the soil. This plant growth promoting rhizobacteria is a large group of bacteria which are commonly called PGPR and they play an important role in promoting the plant growth by different mechanisms. 
these PGPR microorganisms participate in the key ecosystem processes, act specifically on certain plant species and play a central role in the decomposition as well as in the composition of plant communities in the different environment. Moreover, some PGPR are able to produce phytohormones which increase the population of other beneficial microorganisms and control the population of harmful ones in the rhizospheric area of the soil. Thus, plants able to recruit greater population of these microorganisms into their rhizosphere and the, the, this population is contributing for the better suitability of the plant. Another community of the microorganisms, specifically bacteria, present in the soil, they act as the disease suppressors. A number of bacteria have been commercialized worldwide for their disease suppression activity. This suppression is often very specific to particular diseases of particular crops and is effective in control of that disease. For example, Bacillus magatherium, Pseudomonas fluorescens and such bacteria, they are commonly used in some crops to suppress the disease causing fungus Rhizocnea and similarly the bacteria Bacillus subtilis has also been reported to suppress the seedling blight of sunflower caused by Alternaria. Another class of bacteria present in the soil belongs to sulphur oxidizers. These sulphur oxidizers, they are oxidizing the sulphide form of sulphur into sulphate which is the available form to the plant. In the magmatic crust of our planet, sulphur is present in the reduced form as sulphide of metals. Many soil minerals, they also contain the sulphides and this form of sulphur is largely unavailable to the plants. The biological oxidation of hydrogen sulphide to sulphates by the microorganisms is a major reaction of the global sulphur cycle. And this action is performed by sulfur oxidizing bacteria which are present in the soil. These sulfur oxidizing bacteria belong to gram negative bacterial community and consist of the species Thiobacillus and Thiosephira. They are heterotrophs, but some of the bacteria belonging to Paracoccus, Xanthobacter, Alkali genes, and Pseudomonas also exhibit chemolithotrophic activity to oxidize the inorganic sulfur. To sum up this module, I can say that today in this module, we have learned about the different kind of microorganisms which are present in the soil. In the soil, they are playing a very diverse role. They are the disease suppressors, they are the nitrogen fixers, they are the phosphorus solubilizers, they are the plant growth promoters, they are present in the rhizosphere of the plant and by their various act metabolic activities, they are promoting the growth and the vigor of the plant. Thank you.